Hi, yes, hello everyone, I'm Gavin.js, and today I decided to just follow my heart and see where it takes me, and apparently that was towards abstract nonsense. Why? Because it's fun, and I felt inspired by a Max Hay video talking about a mission and shiny glowy things, and I like to make shiny glowy things. But instead of making abstract floating light pads like he usually does, I wanted to make a glowing mechanical jellyfish. Now that's not exactly what I had intended to make starting out, but that's what it became. And I think that seems fairly logical because, like I often do, I started off with the default sphere, and jellyfish are mostly spherical, right? And I had a lot of fun in general just sort of cutting it up and beveling it in places, adding some insets, and I ended up with a really satisfying shape that in the end had a lot of character but was still fairly spherical. And once I was satisfied with that spherical shape, I decided to add in the hexagons there at the bottom, and all I really did there was add in an echosphere with one subdivision so that I could just throw on a dual node in geometry nodes and get those hexagons. I then quickly applied that so that I was able to edit the hexagons, and moved on to adding more sci-fi elements like the connecting rods, some rings, and other little details. A lot of these details ranged from the larger elements, such as the panels at the top of the jellyfish, down to the rings that I mentioned, that all just sort of adds to the believability and the overall sci-fi appearance of the jellyfish. The rings I really just added in for an extra level of believability because I wanted them to look rubbery as if it's a seal to protect against water because of course, where else are you going to find a jellyfish than underwater? I also added in a sphere that'll end up looking like a screen behind the hexagonal plating, and then an icosphere that'll appear at the top of the jellyfish that'll also look like a sci-fi screen of sorts. These two will act as my main glowy elements, but as far as the modeling goes, they're not terribly complicated, I just chopped off the bits that wouldn't be seen. I also had a lot of fun playing around with curves and geometry nodes, which I used to make the tentacles of the jellyfish. I was able to get this really cool stretchy rubbery effect whenever the tentacles extended or contracted, and it's not the most noticeable part of the final render, but I thought it was really neat, and I'm definitely going to be using this again in a future project. Along with that I had some fun instancing geometry along the curve and making sure that everything was oriented correctly, and making sure that the endpoints had unique geometry. All of this is not terribly novel, but I had a lot of fun figuring it out, and with this being my first time playing around with geometry nodes, I was very happy with the final result. I will say my biggest gripe with geometry nodes is the lack of for loops. I didn't realize just how much I had relied on this in my previous workflow until I didn't have them anymore. <laughs> Fortunately, I was able to instance the tentacle geometry on points in a sort of pseudo for loop, but I haven't been able to get a proper for loop working yet. I have a feeling that I'll have to either script that myself, or find some sort of weird exploit. Anyway, after I made the tentacles and got them instanced around the body of the jellyfish, I started playing around with materials. Now for the most part I used a lot of very basic materials, I made a very basic metal material, a basic rubber material, and a very very basic glass material. But with the way that the lighting worked in the final render, it's not terribly noticeable that these materials don't have a lot of effort put into them. And really I feel like if I had put a lot of detail into these very basic materials, they would have ended up distracting a lot from the glowing screen material that I ended up putting a lot of my time and effort into. And for that material, I used a couple of the different tips that Max Hay mentioned in his video, which I mentioned at the beginning, and I found a few random images online. And basically all I did was really just do a lot of random looking math to really distort those images. That was sort of the big takeaway for me was to just really distort the images so that they don't look like anything in particular. You just have a lot of really interesting abstract lines and interesting colors and patterns going on on the surface. And it works really well for the sort of glitch art kind of style I was going for on the screens of this jellyfish. I'd say the thing that I most enjoyed playing around with were the different coordinate spaces that Blender offers. For instance, I used the UV space, and what I did was I just really messed them up. I really 
distorted them and broke every rule imaginable for UVs. It started to look really neat. That combined with the normal space, which just takes the normal of the geometry and places the colors according to that, I was able to get this really cool effect that made each triangle look independent and gave it the effect of each one sort of fading in and out independently as if they're all sort of on their own wiring that's all kind of disconnected and it turned out looking just absolutely phenomenal. And lastly of course I used the reflected space. I didn't look too much into the documentation for this coordinate space but the way that I interpreted it is as if it's the reflected space when you're looking at the surface. And so when the jellyfish moves around, the textures get red as if it's moving in the opposite direction. So it gave this really cool effect where all of the UVs sort of moved the opposite way you would expect. And that combined with everything else really gave it this cool sci-fi techy feel that felt very interesting and abstract. All of those combined really looked cool. I think the UVs really shown a lot there with the stretch distorted effect, but the other two spaces layered together really added to it. Then with that normal space, I also distorted it with a sign function so that as time progresses, each panel fades in and out like I mentioned, and that's what really sells the broken glitchy effect. Again, I really loved how this turned out. It went way better than I expected it to. It took me a little bit of time to just kind of mess around with it and get something that I really enjoyed, but overall the effect is really cool. I really enjoyed it, and I think it turned out very well. Then once I combined that with the overall environment, which is really fairly simple, I just have a light set up with a plane in front of it with some holes cut out so that I get those cool god rays going through the volume of the environment. Uh, it really started to sell the underwater effect and then I added in a bokeh effect with some depth of field to really kind of make it seem like there's a lot of dust and debris falling through the water. It was maybe a little aggressive on that effect but I still really liked it. The bokeh effect is one of those things that I think definitely brings an interesting aesthetic to a piece and I really enjoyed playing around with it for the first time and really getting it to work correctly. I've done that a couple of times in the past but it, I never quite got exactly what I was looking for and here I think I did it really well and I'm looking forward to adding that to future pieces too. But alright with all of that said let's move on to the final render. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you've made it this far, I hope you enjoyed my talking through the entire process and I hope the final result was interesting. Feel free to smash the like, subscribe, bell, icon, buttons, all of those things, all of the general YouTube things. It really helps me out and I really appreciate the support. But otherwise, I will see you all in the next one. Bye.